Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast it's the Darkest Timeline podcast. So we're talking games, movies, TV, something from the week at the point in time that this was recorded and anything else that's been going on. While I've got you, before we get started, I will ask you to please do th- consider subscribing wherever you get your podcasts. Wherever it is, you can click a subscribe button and uh, send a little bit of love our way. Right, let's get cracking. Here we go. This is Cookie Cast, the Darkest Timeline podcast. Can you hear me? Well, it looks loud. And that doesn't. Okay, that's confusing. How are you doing? You well today? At the point in time you're hearing this, are you well? Are you having a good week? Are you having a good day? Are you having a good life? That's the real question. Uh, yeah, so we're back. Back doing the thing that we love. Um, so, first on the uh, on the agenda, I would like to uh, put forward a motion to stop using the word only. <sighs> Got an email the other day from uh, a reasonably well-known games company, shall we say, that is internet-based, shall we say that? Um, and they informed me that they could get me a copy of the new um, Horizon game. Horizon Forbidden West, is it? They could get this for me. For only sixty four eighty five. And as I said at that point in time, you can't use the word only in that sentence. Because it's not only, it's an astronomical amount of money. And yes, admittedly, it's not the £70 that it's supposed to retail at, because that is... An insane amount of money. But the word only does not belong in that sentence. And I understand the the psychological sort of if you use it, so supposedly if you use the word only, it makes the consumer think that they're getting a good deal. Oh, it's only this much money. Well, in your only scenario, it's only an amount of money I can't afford for a computer game. So there is no amount of money in that region that I am prepared to pay, able to pay, or going to pay. So that's kind of that. What it should be, is it should be like, for this astonishing amount of money, maybe they should go with that. Have they tried that as an option? Apparently, I have no internet. That's fun. Why are we doing that? Okay, apparently I do have internet. I only have internet. Only have internet for you. I think I'm bitter because there have been a series of of games that have been released. We spend our time talking about how there are no games to play. And then all of a sudden there are games to play. But I've had to take a long hard look at things and basically realise that I'll never play a new game again 
I have to resign myself to the knowledge that let's face it, I'm probably not going to play that game for a year and at the point in time that I do play that game it probably won't have come down in price that much because to me paying £70 for a computer game is absolute insanity but I am probably in the I don't know, I don't know, minority might not be the right way of putting it, but I imagine I'm in the, I don't know what you'd call it, I am, the short version is I'm, I imagine there's a lot of people out there that bought that game, in fact, I wonder if I can find out, let's have a look, I don't normally do this, but sitting at, sitting at a computer allows for this, so, how many... Copies of Horizon Forbidden West sold. <laughs> so he hasn't disclosed any sales figures for Horizon, but the the game has been confirmed to sell more than twenty million copies worldwide um, so 70 times 20 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 so at 70 pounds a, a pop that game has made 1.4 billion pounds so there you go I am I am by the sounds of it in the minority on this one so maybe the word only is working maybe maybe the computer game by masses have realized that uh, that it is a bargain £70 is acceptable to pay for a computer game. So, um, last week I was talking about the uh, cost of living increase. Um, it's getting to that time of year. Where it's uh, where it's bonus bonus and pay rise will be coming out at some point if you work in an industry that has that sort of thing, and you work in an industry that has it at a particular time of year, that time might be coming up soon. So it's getting to that time of year. For me, I'm already working on the principle that the cost of living is going up so astronomical, astronomically, astronomically sounds bad, um, that there is not going to be a, a pay rise that's going to counteract that. Uh, I think I saw something recently that said the cost of living is going to go up about 14%. And your pay rise is usually about, what, 2 3%? So, how is it that we're supposed to make up the deficit? Um, so last week, I'm talking about the cost of living increase and my concerns around the cost of living increase. This week, um, well, we're talking about war, and I'm not going to talk about it too much, and I'm not going to say too much, um, but in the last uh, in the last week, a war has broken out, um, and I had a conversation in the last week almost completely unrelated until it became related um, and it was a conversation about um, national insurance numbers and national service 
and I've always been led to believe that your your national uh, insurance number, uh, some part of it represents uh, where you would be uh, drafted uh, if there was a, if there was a a reason for national service. And I was having this conversation, talking about uh, national service. And then the realisation that for my entire life, up till this point, it's never really been a a concern. It's never really been a thing. It's never really been an issue. It's not something I needed to worry about on a daily basis. Apart from at the point in time I was having this conversation, the realisation that, oh, that might actually be a concern. That, that could possibly be a concern and what that might look like. I know there's there's always that thing these days of the 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 generations that we have now wouldn't be able to go through what the generations of the past went through. Um, people that went through and lived through uh, the Second World War, the First World War, times like that, were probably a completely different breed of of people to the people that we have now. Um, and I suppose there there would be that question around, you know, would we survive a major conflict at this point in time with the way things are? Um, you know. Are your are your Instagram influencers gonna be uh, gonna be the ones on the front lines? Um, so yeah, a situation where in the space of a week I've gone from worrying about being able to actually you know have lights on in my house. Uh, by the way, I am sitting in the dark right now. I'm using the computer monitor to light the room. So, you know, that's that's moving along nicely. Um, I've got a set of lights that are on a timer. Uh, I've already reduced the time that they come on. Uh, so, yeah, you know, slipping into into that lifestyle quite, quite well. Um, I, I think it just comes back to that that age old thing of have has the world lost its mind what what is going on look at the last two years and you know anybody that's alive now would they have thought that we would have gone through the last two years to then come to this to then come to you know, oh, I can't afford to turn the TV on today. I can't afford to put lights on in these rooms in my house. I can't afford to have the heating on today. To a week later, a war has broken out. And all of this in, in, in my lifetime. Um, it's It really is quite bonkers where we are as a I was going to say society but it's more like as a race it's it's, it's just craziness let's let's move on shall we so uh, it was half term what does half term mean Half term means time off work. What does time off work mean? Yep, yeah, being more tired than if I was working, but having, you know, more fun. So, swings and roundabouts. By the time I got to today, uh, I, I've, ha- I've had to resign myself to the fact that germs are back out there in the world and. There are, you know, five 
human beings in this house and they they all go different places and do different things and eventually the germs are going to get in and I ain't talking about that that germ I'm talking about the common cold um so having had what four days running around like a lunatic by the time I got to today I was like I need a I need a lie down let alone a sit down um but you know what they say no rest for the wicked so had this whole half term thing it's like right on on this day we're going to do this on that day we're going to do that on the, on the other day we're going to do this on this day we're going to do that um after two days i realized hey i didn't necessarily plan this out overly well because we're two days in and we've not done a huge amount um we went to a toy shop uh so there was that um so i panicked i was like i don't feel like we're doing enough um and my eldest my eldest was like well, maybe we maybe we should go out i was like yeah where should we go um i think we went to the park so in the in the se- in the second two days it's like right we need to do stuff so let's do everything that we should have done in the last two days um so it was like mini golf cinema swimming um watching uh, my middle daughter was was insistent she wanted to watch a particular film um so yes there was there was a feeling of um a lack of adequate planning maybe um going from doing little to doing lots um so yeah there was probably there's probably a need to address that further down the line maybe uh maybe plan a little better you'd think this was my first time my first rodeo it is not my first rodeo um yeah so we took the dog to a um a specific dog field um and again in hindsight should have done it differently um i wanted him to get used to the field i wanted uh, to desensitize him to some of the stuff because it's dog field so there'll be like a multitude of different smells there and i wanted him to um just take it steady and try and try and be as calm as possible and then next thing i'm like right we've got 20 minutes left and we haven't really done any of the stuff we wanted to do so should we just let him off the lead and see how that goes and then obviously let him off the lead and he ran around like a lunatic and had i mean that's got to be the best time he's ever had he was so insanely happy um and then i was like that's what we should have done from the start threw the ball for him um some of us chased him he chased us we did this thing where when he'd come running we like ran ran in opposite directions and stuff uh to the point where he'd like abandon the tennis ball and just come running after us and stuff it was hilarious um it's the first time (laughs) it's the first time i've actually seen him run when he's just like oh my god this is amazing and he runs like a freaking weirdo like i was like why why your back legs in front of your front legs it was hilarious um so even that i'm like right we're gonna we're gonna go and we're gonna do we'll do we'll do some training and we'll do some we'll do some uh, recall and we'll do we'll do this and and we'll, we'll really utilize the time that we're there to to really make a make a uh put put an indent in that training and then it's like oh we should have just come and had fun so there was that that kind of thing um yeah i don't know it felt a little bit like amateur hour um but 
turn the turn that ship around did uh, did loads in the last sort of couple of days so you know swings and roundabouts uh, what else oh my god <sighs> nearly ended up with a situation yesterday um, now I restrained myself I refrained and restrained myself because every fibre of my being wanted to do something and I didn't because all I could see was it was going to cause problems so as it is you know it's, it's Sunday you're starting your day like, right okay well, you know getting out of bed it's like oh uh, I'll check check my phone make sure there's been no emergency overnight um, check all the different emails uh, the podcast email the um, the other email addresses and stuff and I'll check my own emails and there was two emails to start the Sunday one was you know a, a standard email and the other was like I was like oh okay so uh, yeah uh, it was uh, unexpected let's say um, and I was like wow that's that's how you want to start your day at 10 past 8 in the morning an unexpected email so that's 10 past 8 I'm a bit like knocked for 6 on that one I'm like okay okay let's recover from this 28 minutes past 8 a notification my one of my apps sends a notification and it's the school app at 28 minutes past 8 on a Sunday morning I'm like what the hell is this is there some kind of emergency has there been, been a, a virus outbreak kind of thing you know is the school going to be closed what could possibly be that important that you would send a message at 28 minutes past 8 on a Sunday morning which is the last Sunday of half term this has to be an emergency <sighs> the emergency was oh, I hope everybody's having a nice half term well I, I, I was until this Look forward, looking forward to seeing everybody back bright and early at uh, quarter to nine in the morning. I was like, quarter to nine in the morning. That's uh, that's that's Monday morning, yeah. Monday morning, where I've got to uh, get up and I've got to run and walk the dog at the same time. I've got to. get back I've got to shower I've got to uh, take my daughter to nursery and I've got to get into the office where I will spend all day working and I'm not overly enjoying the the work at the moment so so there's that uh, and then I'll have to have to leave work at a particular time and go and collect my daughter and get back and you know get the get the get the get more work done and and, and all I'm feeling here is it's 28 minutes past eight on a Sunday morning and you have ruined my Sunday because for, for the rest of the day every couple of minutes 
I'm going to spend my time going, oh, I've got to do that. Oh, and I've got to go to work in the morning. Because it's Monday tomorrow. Because you have decided that I don't know it's Monday tomorrow. And you have decided to go out of your way to ruin every other minute of my Sunday. And the only thing I could think was, I've got an idea, how about I put a comment on this post and say, I would just like to take the opportunity from every single parent who has a child at the school to thank you for ruining our Sundays by reminding us at 28 minutes past 8 on a Sunday morning what, what business have you got sending a message at that time that it's it's Monday tomorrow so thank you for that P.S. if you'd have sent the message 12 hours later it would have had the exact same impact it would have just been less of an annoyance because at 28 minutes past 8 on a Sunday evening we've all pretty much resigned ourselves that it's Monday in the morning and we've got to get on with the day that was all I could think all I could think was to do that but I didn't I wanted to but I didn't because I could see how that might have gone so I left it <sighs> anyway um, that's kind of it for the week it's been it's been a busy old week but not anything to really talk about in the sense of, you know, I can tell you how I, I, I won at mini golf. I'm obviously going to talk about the film that we went to see. Um, I've already told you about the dog, the dog field. So it's, it's one of those. Um, but, um, I've got a couple of TV shows to talk about, I've got a couple of films to talk about, I've got a game to talk about, so, you know, it's not over. So, let's talk about Raising Dion. Um, I finished Series 2 of Raising Dion. Not, not a massive fan, if I'm honest. Um, for some reason, I felt like the uh, the children, the child actors in it, seemed to have got worse, which seems weird because it's set, uh, uh, you know, it's set a couple of years later. I imagine they are at least a couple of years older, but for some reason, they all seem to be worse actors. Obviously, you know, they are children, and I appreciate that. Um, the I spoke last time about the, there's a character in it. That I, I just really didn't like. Um, there was a point where they they were like, "Oh, this character's going to die," and I was like, "Sweet, soon? Can it be sooner than than you know that whatever it's going to be?" Um, I, I think <sighs> I don't know if it was the character or the actress or actor. Um, I couldn't tell you. But um, one of the characters just drove me up the wall. And they were like... like It was kind of like a 50-50 split between like the, the, you know, the main character, Dion, and this character. Um, and it just it drove me up the wall. Um, as a second series, it, I, I don't feel it was as good or maybe very good um, there was a thing at the end that kind of made me think 
there might not be another series and when I saw the bit at the end I was like yeah that kind of feels okay um, obviously Netflix have this thing where they just you know show stuff and then cancel them um, usually after the first series so you know at least they got a second series um, but it was it was a little bit a little bit disappointing uh, so so there was that um, I have started and finished another series in the last week that might give an indication of a either the series was really short or b it was really good uh the series in question <laughs> the series in question was or is reacher um so it's a tv series version of jack reacher which there's a bajillion books there's been multiple films I believe there's maybe even been another TV series. Um, the main guy in it has been in all sorts of stuff, namely Smallville, uh, Titans, and uh, I believe he voiced Raphael in the Michael Bay Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies. Um, so there was him, and then... Another Smallville alum popped up. Uh, the lady that played Lana in Smallville. Uh, Kirsten Crook, is it? Maybe. So, Reacher starts, starts out well. A uh, few downsides to it uh, were... They really play... They really, really heavily played on the fact that uh that, that he was that he was a big guy like every person who ever met him had to make a comment on it every situation every every everything somehow had to come back to him being a big guy um which is one of those he's a big guy um but something that that i didn't like was they did the that whole unrealistic thing where he's massive he's just he's basically just a giant muscle yet his diet consists of um, junk food and pie it's like no his diet consists of chicken and steroids let's Let's be real about this. Let's not let's not do do that thing, shall we? So that was a, a little annoying. Um, good stuff about it. It's um, he he's one of those characters that can tell you a lot about a situation. Like uh, oh, this body was found here, but it was dragged from over there because you can see that there's a line, and and the person was walking heavily on one foot because you can see this, and and uh, they were they were shot from over there, and this was happening, and the light was here, but the moon was here, and you know that kind of thing. All of that's super cool. It's always super interesting. Um, it's very violent. Um, which for TV is always a bit like ooh. Um, a lot of the characters, there's some like supporting characters. They were all very good. Um, so, all in all, thought I, I very much enjoyed it. There were some issues. Um, there was a couple of points in it where I was a bit like, I don't know how comfortable I feel. With the ga with the good guy doing bad guy kind of things, it's like oh, the, there was a situation that happened, so I, so I had to kill somebody. It's like, uh, okay, is that right? Is that okay? Um, so there was a couple of situations like that in it where I, I didn't know if I felt overly comfortable with, you know, that being the the way the good guy, or the supposed good guy, was portrayed. Um, 
I know already it's been renewed for a second series. Um, you can see why. I know that it's been regarded as being um, very popular. I know people people uh, like it. Think it's good. Um, and I I too would agree with all of that. I think it's I think it's good. Um, it was enjoyable, uh, and I, I proper binged it. Um, watched it in the space of. What a few days, um, uh, even even to the point where I was watching it instead of uh, instead of playing computer games. So uh, so there was that aspect. If you're into uh, you know if you've been into any uh, previous Jack, Jack Reacher stuff, um, I haven't seen any of the stuff because the the only ones that I really know are the um, Tom Cruise ones. Uh, and I don't, I don't really entertain Tom Cruise things unless I'm absolutely forced into it. Um, so there's there's that aspect. Uh, so I've never seen the films or anything else. I haven't read the books, uh, but I think I might. So you know, there's that. Went to the cinema. And watched a movie. Um, so took all the girls, went to the cinema. What's on? What's good for? What's good for uh, children to see? Uh, we couldn't make it work to see uh, a couple of the films that we wanted to because they were only out, they only had one showing, and those showings were like you know ten o'clock in the morning sort of thing. It's like no good. We're, we're busy. Uh, but one film that we did kind of want to see was Sing Two. Now, I have seen the original Sing uh, a couple of times. Um, probably more, like, I've seen it, you know, all the way through a couple of times, and then I've seen bits of it at various points in time a couple of times. Um, it's fine. It, it's certainly a very, very, very passable film. Um, I, I enjoy certain aspects of it. So I was like, we'll all go and see this. We'll have a good time. It'll be fine. What I wasn't expecting was when I take all the girls to the cinema, we go to watch family films. We go to watch uh, U's, animated things. We go to watch kids' films. So I generally work on the principle that the film we're going to see will be okay. It will be fine and every now and then i'm pleasantly surprised and every now and then i'm pretty much bang on so an example would be ron's gone wrong that film was fantastic adam's family 2 was fine or even okay so that was that so i walk into the cinema sit down let's watch thing two away we go what I wasn't expecting was to thoroughly enjoy it. I don't know what it was. I don't know what there was about it. I don't know what aspect it is. Not all of the music that they do in it is really my sort of music. There were aspects of it that I wasn't a fan of, uh, which I don't want to go into too much. And there was a point in it that made me cry. So... There is all of that to take into account. The rest of it, I was just like, this film's great. This film's fantastic. I am loving this film. Even the music that I don't like outside of that film, I enjoyed in the film. I was like, oh, yeah, it's good this. I like this. I like this bit of singing. Something else that, that weirded me out was, for the entire film, I had it down that one of the characters was voiced by Liv Schreiber. I was like, oh, that's uh, that's Liv Schreiber, is that? All the way through the film, I'm like, there's Liv Schreiber again. Oh, there he is, doing his thing. Got to the end of the film, we sat through some of the credits, I was like, oh, it wasn't him. And then when I've looked the person up, I'm like, I, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you've done. It was weird. Um... I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's one of those that I'm actually 
looking forward to it coming out to you know rent or buy or if it goes on to one of the streaming services um i'm thoroughly looking forward to watching that film again because i really really enjoyed it um so yeah came out and i was saying to the girls i was like do you like that yeah would you watch it again and the older two were like yeah yeah definitely my youngest was like no it was scary like what are you on about there was nothing in it that was scary oh the the wolf i was like oh actually yeah because I, I i sometimes forget that you're that bit younger and something like an angry wolf would probably be scary um what was nice one thing that i do enjoy when we go to these uh these films is you get to see all the trailers for the upcoming films and you get to see all the trailers for the upcoming like like kids films um so there was a couple of trailers for a couple of films that uh, I'm, I'm like we're definitely going to see those films so uh yeah if you've got kids or if you really enjoy music sing too i can't recommend it enough it was thoroughly enjoyable Speaking of films that I have watched, um, this is a film that I've watched a few times. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to come as a surprise for anybody that I watched Spider Man Homecoming on Saturday night. Um, I've been trying to put my finger on what it is that I don't like about this series of Spider Man films. The Sam Raimi Spider Mans were the Spider. It's kind of like the the Spider Man film that I grew up with, kind of because I was an adult when they first came out. So yeah, it's hard to explain. Um, I will always have a soft spot for the Sam Raimi Spider Mans, even the third one, barring the dancing. Amazing Spider Man. I had always enjoyed those films until watching them through this time and i was like oh wow i can really see what everybody was talking about for all that time they're they're not great films but secretly i was never a hundred percent convinced about the Tom Holland Spider-Man films. And I could never put my finger on it. I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was. So I watched uh, Spider-Man Homecoming on Saturday. And I was like, I think I know what it is. Because I know that they're good films. I know that they're very good. They're very well done. Uh, films that come out now, you know... If they've got the Marvel brand on them, they're going to be good. It, it's just as simple as that. So I, I know that they're good films. I, I do enjoy them. But there's always that something that's like an itch you can't scratch. And I think I've got, I've put my finger on it this time. And I think what it is, is I think they're a little bit too childish. There was always this thing with the with the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films that the cast was too old to play the characters that, that they were playing i never saw it originally no matter how many times i watched it i never really saw it until recently where i was like holy shit balls they are they are that bit older than they should be but it kind of felt necessary as well moving on to uh amazing spider-man it's Andrew Garfield's portrayal of, of Peter Parker is just so weird. Is he cool or is he autistic? Which is it? And in this scene, it's probably both. It was that aspect. It was such a strange performance of that character that you just couldn't get a read on it. I think the Tom Holland ones, and this is going to sound really weird, but it's it feels like children playing at being children 
doing superhero things. And I, I, I understand and I know how that sounds and I know it sounds weird and strange or whatever. But there's just been something about those films. Like, here's an example. I'm already dreading watching the next one. Whatever the hell it's called. Spider-Man... Far From Home? Or is that the current one? Far From Home, because the new one's No Way Home. I'm already dreading it, because there are so many things about it, so many aspects about it that I, I can't get on board with. The the whole spider monkey thing. The whole... Spoilers, by the way. Jake Gyllenhaal slash bad guy thing. It... <laughs> It, it it just doesn't it just doesn't really gel with me and again and here's the here's the weird thing here's where it's going to get really weird i still know it's a good film and i still know it's an enjoyable film there's just something a, 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 a an itch that i just can't quite scratch from the moment the film starts to the moment the film ends and here's another thing if you go back and you watch any of the what was it captain america civil war and then the two avengers uh end game and infinity war if you go and watch those when spider-man comes into them or is in them or those scenes it all feels right and maybe it's that go but go back and look at homecoming they felt that they needed to put iron man in it why why did they need to put Iron Man in a Spider-Man film? If you look at some of the posters, I think if you look at the front cover of like the Blu-ray DVD, whatever, it's Spider-Man and Iron Man on the front. So does that mean it's not a Spider-Man film? It's a Spider-Man and Iron Man film? Or is it that secretly they knew it was a touch weak and it needed something else? just putting that out there something to ponder and again i will reiterate i enjoy those films and i'm looking forward to seeing the third one by little bits and things i've seen heard read whatever the third one sounds like it's going to be absolute madness sounds crazy to me so like i said it's hard to explain but I'm, I think I might have got some kind of handle on it. So that's movies. Um, the last thing to talk about is, and again, it's not really probably going to come as much of a surprise, um, I've been playing Ghost of Tsushima. Not a lot. Uh, I've been opting to, to watch stuff more than play this week. Um, like I say, I was trying to get through the Reacher series uh, and trying to finish Raising Dion. Um, so I've kind of opted for that over playing. Um, I think when you play a game like Ghost of Tsushima, which is so big, so in-depth, so intense, a little bit of a break here and there is probably not a bad thing. Um, I know that I've already installed three games to pick from when I do finish Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I believe I'm at the end of the game, which feels weird because in the third area of the game, I don't feel like I've unlocked a lot of it. It feels strange. Um, but I've done all the side missions and things like that. So what I've done is I've left finishing the game and I've made this the point in time to go and start the DLC stuff. And when I say start, I mean I've literally done the bit at the beginning of the DLC. I haven't even gone to the area where the DLC is set. Um, what I'm hoping is that I can play it, get the DLC done, then go and finish the game, and then see where we are for like a, like a new game plus kind of situation. Because I never quite got to do all the new game plus kind of stuff. Uh, from the first time I played it, because there was the whole thing about getting the director's cut, and then there was the whole thing about getting the PS5 director's cut version, 
and playing that instead. So I'm hoping over the course of the next week to get it finished up and uh, then see about what we can move on to. Obviously, I do have to apologise. There's probably not going to be a lot of talk about new games for quite a while. There's probably going to be a lot of uh, rehashing of old things. So the game section might die off a bit because I don't want to bore you with games that I've already talked about. You know, like Ghost of Tsushima. <sighs> so there we go, that's it. That's that's this week's podcast done. Uh, thank you for listening along. Thank you for being here. And uh, I will catch you next week. So there we go, what do you think to that? Another one done, another week gone, another podcast gone. Thank you for listening along, and uh, if I could just trouble you for one minute, uh, please do consider subscribing, it does mean a lot to us, and it does help us uh, to keep going, you know, in the dark times. You can also check out our website, uh, it's thecookiecast.com. Over there, you've got social media links and email links. Drop us a line. Let us know how you're getting on. So there we go. That's it for this one. Until next time, I'm going to say bye. I'll see you then.